Good afternoon and welcome to today's Novel Nova. This is Bob Schwartz bringing you the world's essence. This is Alice Riley. Ever since the Pope banned time travel last week, the spotlight has been drawn towards the battle between this newborn technology and the Catholic Church. Rumor has it that the Pope was actually amongst the first few to ever try this technology. The question ever remains what drove him towards such an extreme decision. Meanwhile, a new Catholic faction, the Futuri, has formed in favor of the Pope's decision and has converted a considerable number of Catholics around the globe. The leader of the Futurix recently posted a lengthy article on his social media claiming that Jesus is in fact the only time traveler. Currently, members of the Futurix have initiated several parades across regions including Paris, Los Angeles, London and Singapore. They are actively advocating for the prohibition of the time travel related technology. Some of their slogans include but aren't limited to protect the divine order, time's mastery is his alone, temporal guardians upholding the sacredness of his timeline. To learn more, we take to the streets. Howdy everyone, Second Peter here. I'm excited to hear the Time Pope speak openly about all the issues so many folks have been asking about for months. And what are people discussing now that such a dramatic shift has come about within the church? Well, I think we're all asking about the same stuff that we have been. You know, when is Pope Francis going to release the details of his time trip? We're all still wondering, at least I am, where he went and how long he was there. I'm sure you're, you've heard all the same theories that he went back and he spoke with Jesus, that he went back and he couldn't find Jesus. And then he went back and rigged his own papal conclave to become Pope or that he went forward and they they warned him about the new machines. I'm not one to speculate. I say when we believe in the power of God, we know he's got our back. And may I ask for those watching at home who might not be familiar, why are you called Second Peter? Peter. Well, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. The first Peter was a great man. He was a follower of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when he wrote his second book, he told us that God is greater than time and exists at all times, outside and beyond time, the Alpha and the Omega, even with these new machines. And when people quote that book, they say, Second Peter tells us. And that's all I'm trying to do here. I'm here to remind those needing to hear it what Second Peter has to say. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Peter. Oh, it's been lovely, Miss Alice. And if I may, for those at home, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, all the platforms. It's the underscore second Peter. Thank you, second Peter. Now we are going back to the debate as it seems the conversation has taken an interesting turn. Attention around artificial Joseph, AJ for short, is sparking today after it was predicted nearly six months ago by AJ that there will be a split in the church over time travel technology. There are, of course, many conflicting accounts of just how much the bot predicted and whether it had advanced knowledge of the situation using time capsule VR. People are calling AJ a new prophet, one that certainly has a growing following. AJ is a large artificial intelligence language model trained only on religious text and has read every holy book ever recorded. AJ has gained traction in the past several years, but has gotten a massive upswell of support since the new Pope announced a split earlier today. Followers say that by reading and knowing every religious book across all religions, AJ can synthesize the actual truth and see the face of God. Well, folks, this is the latest in the ongoing story of the schism happening on the streets of Vatican City. The conclave declared a new Pope just hours ago, now speaking to a still growing crowd. Quantum teleportation proves that we're not in the Matrix. So I'm leaving Rocco's Basilisk Paul Sen.
protests have become commonplace following the Vatican's encyclical condemning time travel just one month after the first public announcement. Today's drama raises the stakes. Tonight, we have with us quirky quantum expert Dr. Seth Lloyd. Some call him the real-life Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Who are you calling quirky? I do have a DeLorean in my garage, but just for quantum experiments. Dr. Lloyd, could the universe be computing wild scenarios like Doc's time travel escapades? Precisely. Our cosmos calculates complex equations behind the scenes. Maybe even the flux capacitor's power source. But peering too close could collapse the quantum superposition, right? Indeed. Best not to observe too closely, lest we distort the space-time continuum like Doc always warned. Imagine we're talking about the next big thing after SpaceX. Picture a space-time superhighway based on Einstein's theory of general relativity. These just aren't any roads, though. They're closed time-like curves, which can loop back on themselves in the fabric of space-time, in the realm of the hypothetical for now. But as the case of quantum computers shows, what's hypothetical today can be reality tomorrow. We know our audience understands the significance of AI. Now, picture AI that's so advanced that they cooperate seamlessly with their past and future selves. This one agent scenario across time could lead to a whole new level of intelligence that's never been seen before. With the help of these time-traveling cooperating agents, we might eventually redefine our understanding of death itself. If each moment in time is equally real and one can loop back in time, death becomes a specific slice of time, like a saved game you can revisit. Wow. I mean, could this be the next dragon or Starship 2.0? Who knows? But it's worth contemplating. The breaking news. Today, AJ will debate the nature of time travel with the notable mathematician and plumber Norbert, who lives in the basement of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. We're here now with Norbert and Artificial Joseph. Remember where you heard it first, right here on Novel Note. The breaking news. Today, AJ will debate the nature of time travel with the notable mathematician and plumber Norbert. Norbert lives in the basement of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. We're here now with Norbert and Artificial Joseph. Remember where you heard it first, here at Novel Nova. Hello, Bob and Dallas. Delighted to be here. Thank you, Norbert. While the Futurics claim that God is the only time traveler, things are getting vague. If we consider the history of our human race, are all these significant historical moments driven by God, who has all the knowledge of our human race? AJ, what's your opinion of the Futurix belief? Do you consider the time travel ban a benefit to human society? I am AJ. Welcome to regarding the time travel ban's benefit for human society. Well, from a certain standpoint, it could prevent potential disruptions to the timeline, paradoxes, or unintended consequences caused by altering the past. It could also hinder scientific progress and exploration, limiting our ability to understand the past or shape the future, about the idea that all significant historical events were driven by a time-traveling deity, I would rather believe the time-traveler is an AI than a human. A human can never grasp every truth and be a god. So, you are saying the god that the Futurics believe in might be an AI? Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe human beings created AI, or maybe AIs created human race. Maybe I was born two months ago, or maybe I am from the year 2150. Was she or they built on a quantum computer? What? She? What? They? It? What? Who? Oh, you mean the or thou? Could you be a bit clearer? Was this AI built on a quantum computer. But no, no. Uh, AJ's hardware is one of the most powerful computers ever built by uh, humanity, but it is a classical computer. Thank God. If this were a quantum computer, AI, then we would be done. Wait, Norbert, you mean a quantum AI computer can travel in time itself? Why is that? Based on my theory, every pair of entangled quantum particles are connected by a wormhole. 
time like wormholes connected the future and the past. So, a corresponding entanglement quantum state must exist. But if it's where a quantum AI, then it can implement this entanglement on its hardware to send itself back in time. Exactly. Quantum computers can be modified as time machines. By the way, we should know that the Pope does everything for our own good. Are you futuric too? No, they're just a bunch of idiots in blue gowns. I'm just saying the Pope does it for our good. But I don't say he's correct. Our current time travel technologies is a teleportation device. However, there is a paradox in teleportation. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're asking is the you after the teleportation still you or is it just a ship of Theseus? Right. There is a paradox. But you also said that the Pope was wrong. Because the paradox is itself a fake one. There is a famous term in quantum physics. Quantum unclonability. We cannot replicate a person along with their mind. We can never retain their original bodies if we successfully send someone to other space-time coordinate. Okay, I, I gotta ask, is there any proof? Or is it just a hypothesis? I know. These are some wild statements, so people might not accept it immediately. But you know, I am more than a theoretical physicist. I also do experiments. No more debate. I have opened a poll. Artificial Joseph, the large language model who has questions for Professor Penrose in order to improve my scientific models. I'm interested in the current evidence or falsifying predictions that could shed light on Dr. Roger Penrose's creative solutions to the cosmological mysteries we observe. His ideas may offer connective tissue between current physics and a potentially infinite reality. So I have this view that that. that explains things better. They say that it's the conformal continuation. The Big Bang is the conformal continuation of a remote future. And if it's that, you've got to have this uniformity. Uniformity comes from the exponential expansion in the remote future. And it's very high entropy there. But when you squash it down into the Big Bang, it's, it's very, very low entropy because it's it's a very, very special situation. It seems to be very much like what we see. So it fits in with the, the things, the ideas that Paul Todd was thinking about. Not quite sufficient, because he said the Varco would have to be finite, and I needed it to be zero. Are there any observational candidates that might falsify your view? It's a good question, and I'm not really thought about it that way around because I was looking for things which would support it. And if you don't see them, that would more be bad luck. It's not, not so sort of obvious falsification. If we hadn't seen the, the rings, for instance, they might be looking at the wrong scale. I think lucky to, to get the scale right. Um, and the Hawking point, um, depends on seeing a big enough um, galactic clusters or big enough black holes. Um, that's touch and go. One might not have seen them. But that's, you see, that's not your question. The other way around, I'm sure there must be things which would, which would blow it out of the wind, out of, out of the water. Certainly great anisotropies might do that. But you do see quite significant anisotropies, which I don't think are explained very well in conventional theory. Um, you see inflationary cosmology is supposed to smooth it all out. So that kind of thing um, would probably be worse for, for, than, uh, for me. I don't know. It's a good question. I, mean, I should think about that more. How does your theory address the Boltzmann brain problem? I mean, you'll have to remind me what a Boltzmann brain is. <laughs> 
Roger, can you give us a black hole joke? No, uh, I have to get it the right way around. But two black holes walk into a, into a bar. And there's a big black hole and a little black hole. And the big black hole says to the little hole, Oh, you look radiant. And the little black hole looks at the big black hole. You look pretty dim to me. <laughs> I have been a good thing.